direction. Sure. Like, can I just okay. can I throw out a good example? Yeah. <laughs> um, it could be a good thing as well. The, the folks that joined uh, Washington Mutual, they hired their new CEO, I think, three weeks after they went bankrupt. The guy worked three weeks, he got a severance package worth like $50 million. So what's that mean? Worth? I, I mean, if I were a CEO, I, I'd keep that in consideration as well. I don't know how much. Not a bad uh, How much longer y'all is going to be out there at the same time? Not, be, uh, not a bad way to play the country club. Sure. Okay, okay, so do you go for a CEO that has like directly relevant experience in the internet? I mean, do you find a you know successful CEO? They're throwing out Meg Whitman, right? Ex CEO of, of eBay, right? Do you bring in someone like that? Do you take someone from a completely like non related industry, like really a Jack Welch ish type of a guy, you know, someone that turned around another company, brought it to success? A businessman. I mean, Yahoo's, they have to give up on internet entrepreneurs. I mean, that. There's so many of them out there, and there's so many products that are already in existence. You need you need a salesperson, you need a businessman. You seem to freaking drive the company and get it stuck in your head. So when I turn on the computer, I want to go to Yahoo. I don't want to go to Google or, or MSN or any of those other sites. I have to actually overly really disagree. I would hire an Uber geek with a personality. That's can, can Larry Bill Page. Gates turn around this company. That's can Bill Gates turn around Yahoo? Um, no. <laughs> no, uh, no. I think I think so you want to be honest about truth? I don't. I wouldn't think Bill Gates is anywhere near the right guy for that. I think Bill Gates is a phenomenal CTO of the USA. I think he's a horrible choice for a Yahoo. I mean, let's face it. Microsoft hasn't exactly been known for innovation over the last ten years or so. Right. Um, I think that you're looking for somebody who has. I like an industry insider because I think you need somebody who really has an understanding of what technology can do next. Um, because I think it's going to be a, a linchpin in, in turning Yahoo around is going to be defining what is next, defining what is next in the internet, not reacting to what is next in the internet. Right, and um, it's a sophisticated enough market where an outsider, a complete outsider, can't come in and fully get it. No, but then you are unless to... unless they rally, and the only exception to that rule is if you can find somebody who has a phenomenal multi-time track record of building a team of advisors that really do know their shit. If, right. so, if somebody comes in who has worked in biosciences and has worked in like a pure business industry and can, has shown consistently that they can come in from the outside and build a team of advisors and then use that information appropriately to, to build from there, like an Obama. maybe that's an exception. But I think that realistically, there's a 95% chance that the right person for this job no. is a tech guy. Really? But uh, I, I can see them hiring a 35-year-old CTO. I can see them hiring a 30-year-old CTO. Hire Mark CEO? Zuckerberg? I can, I can see somebody a little bit older than a Zuckerberg. I don't, for CEO? Yeah. I would agree. I'm thinking almost like you, you, you look at Yahoo and you look at like internet companies and everyone's, so, everyone's focused on like, you know, one, the technology. They're also focused on, on America. I'm thinking like from an international perspective. What technology companies really dominated from an international perspective? I know Microsoft has reached internationally. Tata. Uh, <laughs> no, but I don't know. Who, who that young or who that focus on the technology is going to be able to like you know influence at the influence at the international level? Well, Besides just saying, let's Microsoft create a. Has. Huh? I think it's I mean, Microsoft has for sure. Microsoft has. I don't know that Google has. See, part of the reason that I'm part of the reason that I guess I'm kind of on this like I can see them hiring somebody like in their 30s, you know, like somebody relatively young. Okay, maybe early 30s is a bit much. I may have been over overstating myself a little bit, but I'm almost envisioning like a borderline a guy who, if they didn't go into computer science, would have gone into advertising, like that ultra creative mindset. Um, and there are a lot of guys who are out there running major international advertising firms right now, especially some of the ones that have been successful over the, you know, the past few years. I mean, Crispin Porter's main, you know, major, you know, kind of young, one of their major guns is a very, you know, sort of like, I believe he's early, late, he's late so 30s. You're talking about hiring a businessman. I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about hiring a creative guy. Somebody who really like a CMO to C CEO. Okay, well, that's what I mean. That not, not, a businessman. No, again, not necessarily. I, I'm looking for somebody who is technology first but has that very creative spark. And I just think that because the internet has consistently changed and technology has consistently changed so much, look at the guys who are the major players technologically in all of the companies. Like you have very few guys who are 40 plus who are major technological players in the most cutting edge web companies today. But most of them have also started out with the companies when they were you know, in their, in their mid 20s founders and grew up to everything. That, that's, that's very true, but you've also got- Look at Google who brought in Eric Schmidt. He was out of a Nortel. What relevance do they have to, to Google? Absolutely none. Minimal. I mean, they have there. There is some, but you know, minimal. Are, are there guys out there who have probably proven themselves creative enough over long terms to come in from like a, a fringe industry and come in and do it? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I just I have this I have this sneaking suspicion that it could be a, it could be Yahoo could reinvent themselves by hiring 
a, a relatively proven young gun. Right. So I go completely could, opposite of, you, of that. Actually, yeah, I, you I go, go like staunch industry veteran. I, no, I go complete leader, inspirer, like I, like mover, shaker. I think they have the tech talent. I think they have the tech leadership to to rally around and, and to, to solve those tough tech. They have the CTO. They have the tech side. I'd hire Jack Welch. I don't think Jack Welch takes the job. Not either. Why? He's at Oregon. Yeah, but Yahoo like pales in comparison to what uh, GE was and even is when he when he when he when he yeah when he run. It reminds me of somebody with his kind of background. Really? But I don't think Jack Welch had that kind of background until he became like you yeah. know the success that he was at GE. I still think that that's still. But there there gotta be like, like Jack Welch molds out there. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, someone like that that can inspire inspire confidence in, in I, everybody. I don't think, everything. I really don't think we're that far off. I, I think we're talking about like inspiring and being creative and being that kind of a leader. I think that people can rally behind, and again, I'm not talking about, a, I'm not talking about somebody fresh out of college here, but I can see them rallying behind a relatively, like in, in the grand scheme of things, like I think CEO of major multinational corporation, I think like, you know, okay, 60 plus, right? But I think that they can really rally behind some relatively young, inspirational talent. And I think they can be the person you're talking about, being somebody who's like, okay, we can, we can do this. We can get behind this guy. We can feed off his, ener his energy, his enthusiasm, his direction. I, I think that that can't, I don't think we're talking about mutually exclusive. There's, there's another question. I mean, like, those, separate things those right? young guys happen to be at all the hot startup companies, but how well are they doing at the startups? Mark Zuckerberg, apparently, is one of the worst CEOs out there. And that's why he's why got I, a great I, idea. He's a, I, that's another conversation, but I think he's a horrible businessman. And that's why I'm, I'm not necessarily suggesting Mark Zuckerberg, but I think that another thing is he's probably too far on the extreme of the end. But there have got to be guys who have already been involved in a couple of massively successful startup op startup opportunities who have been in kind of ground up moving forward. Facebook, Facebook wasn't it? Yahoo needs that kind of an innovation. They need that kind of a rebirth. They need that kind of and you know, okay, we have, we have people, we have eyeballs. They almost need, I think, a little bit of a startup rebirth. And that's what can make them Web 3.0's leader. Really, I think that's what I think that was the mentality when they let Jerry Yang step in as the interim because they're like, we need to go back to core. We need to focus on what made Yahoo what it is, so on and so forth. And it's their like, it's the inability to manage the actual corporation of that is killing them right now. And, they can do that. And maybe that's part of the reason that I don't inherit. I think that the, the screw up with Jerry Yang wasn't where like the theory that he was hired in from. It was the fact that he never got over this is my company. I kind of like the Jerry Yang model. I do. As far as hiring somebody young, or as far as you know, hiring somebody who has a lot of roots in the company or like has a lot of investment in the, in the industry, uh, Jerry Yang's downfall entirely to me was just the fact he never got over this is my company. And I think he was probably a little too stuck in what it was and not enough in what it could be. It could have been again, just again, again, another great Steve Jobs yeah, example. I just, I don't Steve think Jobs was... got over what Apple was and need, looked towards what it needed to be, and I think that Jerry Yang could have been that guy. He, he could have been that that, that visionary looking forward. It just and maybe he was and is, but that has nothing to do with the fact that he completely botched up like legitimate business opportunities, which he wasn't qualified to handle in the first place. Hmm. He wasn't qualified to sit at that table. Well, let's face it, though, but also somebody who comes into this company, they mean, the board is going to have tighter strings on the next person that comes in, plain and simple. Like, it, it's going to be. The CEO will not have the, the breadth of impact. Which makes it that not that good of an opportunity for Which somebody. probably makes it not that good of an opportunity. The board will have a very, very, very tight rope. Which means they need a yes man around them. Which means that's what the board is looking for, if that's the case. The board is looking for a yes man. I think the board is. I think the board at this point has to be looking for a sale, and I'm not entirely convinced that at this point, at thirty-four dollars a share, that was the time to sell it. Today, with the market as crappy as it is, everybody's undervalued. I mean, from banks to businesses, you know, from banks, every sector right now is undervalued by and large. I can see them in the long term. Yeah. I think it's a bad time to sell Yahoo, and that's why I think that innovator and that focus, that the person who can focus on the future, that would be the right hire. Everybody always says that until a company goes bankrupt. It's always like. It's it's so bad it's gonna get better. It's so bad it's gonna get better, and then eventually you just can't get better. They go under. I mean, I don't think they'll get better. I think they'll 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 like it's like uh, being able to take a car, breaking it down for its parts and selling the parts. You get more than the actual whole. I see Yahoo doing that. Yeah. I see them losing their like laggard businesses and holding on to what's core. So, what's the only thing that's core to Yahoo right now? It's not the only thing that's core to Yahoo is one their their customers and two their advertisers. Everything else can go to shit. Their search business can go to shit. Their technology can go to shit. everything can be gone away with. Right. They need to keep their customers, keep their advertisers, that's worth something. I, I can see them selling everything else um, and making more money than they could if they sell the whole company. 
I, I got another financial than a qualified. I, 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 sure. I, I think that I can logically see that happening. It's like sports. The sports side to ESPN, selling like the news side to CNN, selling the, the email side. To, search to Microsoft? Yeah, search to Microsoft, email to whoever the hell. How much time we got left, team? 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Sell Yahoo, don't sell Yahoo today. All, all right out. Don't sell Yahoo today. Sell it. Don't sell it. See you next week. <laughs>